Is it borderline <laughs> personality or may I'm thinking of antisocial? What is borderline personality? Disorder? I don't know. People diagnose me with it, so I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> People, People on the like internet. <laughs> well, my, my therapist did tell me to go to these DBT classes, so I was mm. like, okay, so maybe he thinks because I asked him, I said, tell me, do I am I bipolar or something? And he's like, well, everyone has traits of like personality disorders. He goes, you have like traits of borderline person. But I've never taken medication for any sort of mm. um, mental illness. There's nothing wrong with it. Love mental illness. Talk about it all the time. Mental Love mental is, illness. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we love mental illness. Do I think Trisha Paytas is a bad person? No, but when she discusses what she's been through and the symptoms she's been diagnosed with by her therapist, I think it explains a lot about what all of us see and there's a lot that we can learn from it. What's up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and sometimes what I do is pull different topics from the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can learn from it. Whether it's people's successes or missteps or whatever it is, there's always something to be learned. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul, all right? So a ton of you, uh, messaged me and asked me if I saw, you know, uh, Trisha Paytas on the H3, H3 podcast. Um, and I saw a bunch of people talking about Twitter, like this is the best H3 podcast ever. So I was like, okay, I'll check it out. All right. So we're going to be talking about, uh, what went on in that podcast. We're going to be talking about borderline personality disorder, but listen, last week I made a video and I promised you, I made you a promise that any video I make, I'm going to be sure to provide you with value, okay? When I discuss these things, and, and whether you believe me or not, I really don't care. But those of you who are rewired soldiers out there who come here to try to learn how to improve your mental and emotional well-being, what I want you to take away from this is how to learn how to deal with people in your life. And some of them may struggle with borderline personality disorder. And here's one of the main reasons why. This guy right here, this D-bag of all D-bags right here, his name is Paul Elam, okay? And he makes videos about how people with borderline personality disorder are this evil, awful person. And he has like this whole like MGTOW community of people who like just talk about how those with borderline personality disorder are like the devil, all right? I made a video about this dude a while back. I'm gonna link it down in the description below. Read through the comments, okay? So part of what I'm doing here is to educate people and hopefully, hopefully people can understand a little bit more, all right? But here's, here's a clip that I wanna start out with. I go to DBT classes, where's my camera? It's right here. I go to DBT classes, okay? I get it under <coughs> control, What's I'm DBT? fine. For borderline, for borderline personality disorder, a lot of people think I have BPD, and I go to DPT for it. It's group therapy. Mm -hmm. I take the skills. I do the lessons. Been going since May eighth. What's up? Is it borderline <laughs> personality, or may I'm thinking of antisocial? What is borderline personality disorder? I don't know. People diagnose me with it, so I don't know. <laughs> okay. People, <laughs> people on the like internet. <laughs> well, my my therapist did tell me to go to these DPT classes, so I was mm -hmm. like, okay, so maybe he thinks because I asked him, I said, tell me, do I am I bipolar or some shit? And he's like, well, everyone has traits of like personality disorders. He goes, you have like traits of borderline person, but I've never taken medication for any sort of mm. um. Mental Mental illness. There's nothing wrong with it. Love mental illness. Talk about it all the time. Mental love mental is. illness. <laughs> we love mental illness. All right. So check this out. Okay. I have worked in addiction treatment. Many, many, many people who come through treatment have borderline personality disorder. All right. One of the symptoms of borderline personality disorder is substance abuse. So it's no wonder that a lot of them end up in a drug and alcohol rehab. So this is just my suggestion based off my experience working with thousands of people with borderline personality disorder. Um, but it's for people who might have BPD as well as people who know somebody with BPD. So one thing right here, okay. And this is just purely my opinion, like Trisha Paytas, and I don't know if she just wasn't opening up about it fully on the H3 podcast, but she's like, I don't know. I don't really know what BPD is or whatever. I go to these DBT groups or whatever. No, okay? So I've been diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder um, and depression, and as well as I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. Like, something that has helped me more than anything is educating the hell out of myself about this stuff. Like, it's so important and it's liberating too. Like if you have any mental illness, I don't care what you have, 
right? Educate yourself about it. Like it helps you realize like, oh, this is what's going on. It can explain a lot of the thoughts and feelings and emotions that you're going through. But here's the best part, you ready? You start to find solutions, okay? But what I always recommend to people as well, like when I was working in the treatment center, I worked with a lot of families and everything like that. I highly recommend that if you have a loved one struggling with a mental illness, such as borderline personality disorder, or even addiction or depression or anxiety or PTSD, whatever it is, educate yourself about them, all right? Like if you love that person, if this is an important person in your life, educate yourself about it, right? Because it will help you help them more, it will help you help yourself more. Because I made a video about this the other day about Trisha Paytas. We take things so personally, all right? But we, when we understand the illness that somebody is struggling with, we don't take it as personally, all right? But the other part, this clip right here. So should we wrap it up? Is this how you experience Always everything? It it's like, 100% this and then oh my god you were that five minutes and then ago, now I'm the worst you look at that you get that yeah that's kind of me maybe there's something wrong with me this is one of the main traits of people who struggle with borderline personality disorder but listen listen to the words coming out of my mouth like even like Trisha Paytas said her therapist said a lot of people have symptoms or traits of personality disorders and what they're talking about right there is black and white thinking, which is sometimes known as splitting. Now, for people with borderline personality disorder, this is to an extreme, okay? You're all good or all bad, all right? They will love you one day, hate you the next day. One of the best books out there, if you wanna educate yourself about borderline personality disorder, is a book called I Hate You, Don't Leave Me. Also, if you have a loved one who struggles with BPD, get this book. It's called Walking on Eggshells. It was specifically made for loved ones of those who have BPD, all right? But you you need to understand the black and white thinking of love somebody one minute, hate them the next minute. But even if you don't have BPD, like I made a video a long, long, long time ago about, uh, I, I called it like borderline society or something. Like you see this happen all the time. Like look at, look online, how many public figures, everybody loves them one second, then one tweet comes out and everybody hates them, right? So a lot of us struggle with black and white thinking and we need to work on that by just being realistic, all right? so. Again, I don't think Trisha Paytas is a bad person, but a lot of these are just part of what she's dealing with, all right? And is that an excuse? Absolutely not. Like, this is my complete personal opinion on this, okay? Like, I was thinking about which direction to go with this video, and I'm gonna toss this in here, and this is where we're gonna circle back to what I titled this video. Like, this is me personally, just me personally, and I have to live my life a certain way because I am a drug addict in recovery and I'll, there's there, there are certain things that I know will lead me to relapse. So I cannot hang out with certain people. My, my circle of friends is very, very small. But Trisha Paytas is not somebody that I could be like really good friends with, right? Like I would, have her as like an acquaintance, right? And some of you might have a friend like this and it's totally up to you. So I'm not saying like nobody should be friends with her, but like in the podcast, there were multiple lies in there. You know what I mean? Um, one of them, and it might be pure ignorance. It might be pure ignorance that she just didn't know about that video, all right? But you do. I don't, I'm gonna show you, I don't. I make no money off AdSense. Why do you think I do Patreon and show my I make no well, money. Well, it supplements your income, obviously, but no. this video has two uh, downloads. I am, oh my God, <laughs> so aggressive. I gotta turn down. Okay, it's, now what do I do? It says get started. Okay. Log in. Yeah. There, you're in. Okay. Now click, that, click your main channel. Okay. Okay, you're in. Oh my so gosh. Now, okay. Now go to that video. How do I do? You do it. Okay, I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not trying to expose anything that's private, but... It's here. all demonetized. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, where is it? Uh, apology. 
and then it's coming up regarding my tra- I am transgender. Three million views, green icon, monetized, and I'm going to tell you exactly how much money <laughs> no, she made. <laughs> she made $8,000 from that video. But yeah, so she made $8,000 off that. And this is something that I see a lot of YouTubers complain about, like, oh, you get demonetized and demonetized and demonetized and demonetized. Like, you guys, all of you who are the audience, I just want to let you know, like, it is... It is inflated way worse than you think it is. Like, is demonetization an issue? Yes, but not everything is being demonetized. Here's a great example. Like, they were talking about Trisha Paytas's 10-inch lady bits on this podcast, and it was fully monetized when I watched it. Like, there was like three or four mid-roll ads in the first... 20 minutes, okay? So like, I love the work that Nerd City did on his video, but anyways. But when it comes to Trisha Paytas, like, I, I hope, I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt that she was just ignorant and didn't understand, but I can tell you as a YouTube creator, like YouTube, when you're uploading a video and if you don't monetize it, it like shows you like a little red arrow and it's like, yo, you, you might wanna monetize this, all right? So I don't truly believe necessarily that she didn't know it was monetized, but she made $8,000 off of it. And the, the conversation got wacky right there. Uh, <laughs> and it got a little like uncomfortable and everything. But the other thing was too, she kept talking about on the podcast, how she's been sober since May 8th. And I made a video about this because she also lied when she said this. But I, I did a lot of pills, like a lot of like pain pills and stuff for my, my thing. Mm-hmm. So that's been my whole life is just pills, which I don't, I can't even take them. Like if I have surgery now, I don't even, like I just, uh, I tore my meniscus in September and I had like, I didn't take any pain pills for it. I was just like, oh, I don't want to do that. And here's a clip and why I made a video about that. I showed pills in this. I obviously was taking pills for the pain of my knee. I only take one pain pill now a night before I go to bed. So I don't feel, don't like get worried for me or anything. I, I mean, I was worried for me. Like I was like, I don't want to take any more pain pills, but I just take one pain pill before bed and ibuprofen in the morning to reduce swelling. Um, so I do take pills. I feel like I'm in a good head space enough to not abuse them. So that's good. Because my drug of choice was prescription opioids okay so i had a lot of people request me to make a video about this and talk about it from the recovery aspect of it and yeah she was taking painkillers she said she had it under control what i did with my video was i discussed um the the safe ways to do it if you're an addict in recovery because there is literature in both aa and na about taking these types of medications in recovery but she just lied right there too right but finally, one of the last reasons, like I, I wouldn't be able to like keep somebody like that around as a friend, right? And these are just things I want you to think about is there's no strict moral compass, all right? So a lot of you know, I've been diving really deep into moral philosophy lately and moral psychology. It's absolutely fascinating. So what you learn is based on how people were raised and how they grew up and all these other factors, people lean more conservative or more liberal. But I think just from my perception, I think the majority of people, the majority of people that I've encountered and that I witness on the internet and in real life, a lot of people don't have a very strict moral compass, okay? This is very apparent when Trish, uh, with Trisha Paytas, how you see her inner lawyer, we call it the inner lawyer, who's rationalizing and arguing her points about what Ethan is and isn't allowed to joke about, right? But then you see her talking about her love of someone like Howard Stern, okay? Now, this isn't just a Trisha Paytas thing. You do it, I do it. And one of the reasons I'm trying to learn so much about moral psychology is because we need to become more self-aware of this. Like I made an Instagram post the other day and I forgot what it said exactly, but that's what I was talking about. We're all hypocrites, all of us, me, you, everybody. We are all hypocrites, especially when it comes to morality. It's just some of us are self-aware about it. And sometimes that's the best that we can do. And I have a whole series called Morality Mondays where I'm diving into like morality and discussing it. If you would like to learn more about it, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell and check in on Mondays. But there are a lot of reasons for this. And like basically what I've, I've just been 
learning is like, I'm, I'm starting to develop more empathy. Like I understand why people justify the things that they do, why people get pissed off about the things they get pissed off about, why people get angry and upset about the things they get angry and upset about. Because when you sit back and look at it from a rational perspective, rather than an emotional perspective, you're like, oh, makes sense, you know what I mean? But a lot of us aren't self-aware about it. But anyways, to sum this up, to sum this all up, all right? I, I had a comment the other day, I'll put it on the screen if I can find it. But uh, it was a great suggestion. At the end of the videos, just kind of wrap all the solutions up. So the first one is, if you have BPD, educate yourself about BPD. Educate yourself about the symptoms, all right? If you're the loved one of somebody with BPD, educate yourself about it and get your own help if you need to, all right? If you have a parent, a spouse, a child, or somebody like that with BPD, get therapy if you need to. I'm gonna link two books down below. One of them's called I Hate You Don't Leave Me. The other one's called Walking on Eggshells, all right? Two solutions right there. The other thing I was talking about is just be mindful of who you keep in your life. The other day I made a video about the biopsychosocial model of mental health, all right? And the social model is who you keep in your life. My life has gotten a lot better since I have limited the amount of people that I hang out with. All right, so those are some solutions for you, baby. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who's supporting the channel over on uh, Patreon. And you know what, I got some DMs, like some people have been buying the merch, getting some hoodies for the winter. So I appreciate all of you and I appreciate everybody who gets uh, my mental health books and supports the channel that way. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.